Welcome everyone. Holding tractor Chabas in the sixth chapter. Bame is the name of the chapter. And we'll start from the top. Vatanya Abishua Imel Abishua says should um, just to make sure if you're taking an extra garment on you or in this case the amulet said you're allowed to take it as long as you're not holding it in your hand and uh, so what are we dealing with so we see the we bicycle we state that an emulate may not be carried even though it uh, it cures the ill person. We can still prove that <coughs> from the Mishnah that amulets do not possess intrinsic sanctity. So with an amulet covered with hide, so it's covered with a, a leather. Person wearing such an amulet need not remove it before entering a bathroom. It cannot be proven from the Mishnah's ruling permitting the wearing of amulets on the Shabbos that amulets have no intrinsic sanctity because it's covered. So therefore, it's allowed to go with it to the bathroom. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have intrinsic sanctity. But one second, feeling is also covered with skin. It's covered with leather. If you're going into the bathroom, you have to take off the tefillin for Amis from the bathroom and enter the bathroom without tefillin. So the Gemara says there it's different. Tefillin is different than amulet because there there's a sheen. Also, Mishum sheen because the Hebrew leather sheen that appears on the outside of the leather of the leather casing of the tefillin. Because Abai said the sheen that we put on tefillin, it's Allah Moshe Misinai. It was ordained by Moshe at Sinai to have the sheen on the tefillin. Abai used tefillin, Allah Moshe Misinai used tefillin. Abai used tefillin, Allah Moshe Misinai. So Abai said not just the sheen, also the dalit and the yud, which formed the name of God, Shakai, Shin Dalit Yud. All of them Allah Moshe Misinai. So that's why with filling you have to remove them with amulet which is covered with a, with a uh, it's just a casing of skin that you would be allowed to enter the bathroom. It does not mean that it doesn't have sanctity. Amulet might have sanctity as well. The names of God is written there and the like. So then the Mishnah stated that you shouldn't go out on Shabbos. Shirion is a coat of mail. It's a special armor. Shouldn't go out with it. No, wearing a helmet on Shabbos or shin guards. Shirion Zod. The Gemara says, What is Shirion? It refers to a coat of mail. Kazdo, a helmet. I'm Rav Sanarto. Rav said, This refers to the leather helmet worn under the armor helmet. Magafaim, shin guards. I'm Rav Puzmeke. Rav said, This refers to leggings of iron. Worn during times of war. So all these things you should not wear them on Shabbos. Obviously, not talking about soldiers uh, that are on, on a mission. We're talking about regular people who should not wear these things on Shabbos. Go out with them on Shabbos for sure. Then we start in the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, uh, A woman may not go out on the Shabbos with a needle that is pierced. No, no with a signet ring. A ring with a signet, signet ring. Same thing. Not with a clasp of balsam oil. No. Brooch. A brooch. Yeah. Brooch first. Yes. What is brooch? It yes. says yes. the nature of this ornament is discussed in the Gemara. Yeah, I know. Spice bundle. Um, not wearing a flask of balsam oil. Yeah. And if she went, if the lady went out wearing one of these items, 
Chayevus chatos she is liable to a chatos offering to a sin offering. Did Rabbi Meir these are the words of Rabbi Meir? Vechachomim ayim vechachomim poituim. But the rabbis, the sages, exempt her from a chatos if she goes out with a spice bundle bechayvelus. I guess that was a type of perfume, you know, so I, that they had. I was looking at. I wanted to see the previous image. It's like or with a flask of balsam oil. So in this case, the rabbis will exempt her from um, korban chatos, from a sin offering. Amar ulo vechilufen beish, and the very opposite of these laws applies when the ring is worn outside by a man. That is, it is rabbinically forbidden for a man to go out wearing a signet ring, while it is biblically forbidden for him to go out wearing a ring without a signet. Biblically, it is permitted for a man to wear a signet ring outside on the Shabbos, for it is considered an ornament for him. The sages prohibited this, meaning the signet ring, however, for fear that a man would remove it to show it to a friend and come to carry it in a public in the public domain. A ring without a signet however, is considered a burden for a man in those places where men do not usually wear rings. So this is the uh, the stipulation over here, that the places that it's not common, it's usually people do not wear rings. And wearing it outside is biblically prohibited. Okay. Alma Kasova Ula. I'm going back to the Gemara. Gemara says, Kasova Ula. Ula holds, Kol midi de chazel ish, any item that is fit as an accessory for a man, le chazel ish, is not thereby considered fit to an ex- as an accessory for a woman. Umidi de chazel ish, le chazel ish, and vice versa, any item that is fit as an accessory for a woman, is not thereby considered fit as an accessory for a man. Mosi Rav Yosef, Aroi Mitzim Besakin, shepherds may go out on the Shabbos with cloth of sackcloth. Veloi Aroi Belvadam, when not only the sages did not, um, did not say this concerning only shepherds, Ela Kolodom, rather, they stated that this permit to all people. And the Mishnah speaks of shepherds only because it is the custom of shepherds to wear cloth made of sackcloth. We see from this Baisa that any man may wear clothing of sackcloth because shepherds normally wear them. Why then can a man not wear a ring without a seal? on the biblical level, simply because a woman can wear it, question mark. Ula holds that women are viewed as a nation unto themselves, vis-a-vis men. Thus, although an item that is worn by some men, for example, shepherds may be worn by all men, the fact that a woman wears an item does not cause it to be permitted to be worn by men. Asiva Abai Abai challenged this reasoning from the following Baita. It's a tefillin, one who finds tefillin on the Shabbos in the marketplace or in a field, Machnison Zug Zug should put them on and bring them in pair by pair. Whether it is whether it is a man or a woman. Whoever found the tefillin. Biblically, a woman may go out with tefillin on the Shabbos. 
ואי אומר נושים עם בפני עצמנו, אבל אם אתה אומר שהם נשים כמו נשים 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 והמצווה הזה שהזמן גרומו, בתפילין יש איזה פוזיטיב קומנדמנט, the time causes, וכל מצווה זה אסור שהזמן גרומו נושים פטורס, and any positive commandment, the time causes women are exempt. It must be then that a woman may, may go out with filling on the Shabbos because they are considered accessories for men. We see that women are not viewed as a separate nation. Awesome, because of our mayor Laila's month filling, or mayor holds that night is a time for filling. The Shabbos month filling, who, and he also holds that the Shabbos is a time for filling. Have a mitzvah, so says she loves one goma. Accordingly, the mitzvah of filling is a positive commandment that is not caused by time. Chol mitzvah, so says she loves one goma, no shim chayobes. And the rule is, respect to any positive commandment that is not caused by time, women are obligated. This reason a woman may, may wear the tefillin on Shabbos. For this reason, a woman may wear the tefillin on Shabbos to carry them out of the market. And the reason that she may bring in the tefillin is not because they are considered the accessories of men, but because they are considered accessories for her. But this is an act of transferring from one domain to another in an unusual manner. How then can it be biblically prohibited? This is uh, the Gemara speaks about a woman wearing a signet ring outside on the Shabbos. So it says, this act of transferring is an unusual manner. It says in 35, literally with the back of the hand, if one performs a forbidden labor, Av Melacha on the Shabbos, he is not biblically liable if he did not perform the Melacha in the manner in which it is usually performed. However, it is still rabbinically prohibited. We're dealing with a woman who is an observer or overseer. You have answered the case of a woman. What about a woman with a signet ring, what about a man? Hi David, good morning. Tefillin is muktza, but if tefillin are being desecrated on Shabbos, you find tefillin on the street, then they have a mitzvah to put them on and to carry them out, bring them into a place where it's well, a place where it's uh, more respectful for them. Imagine you find filling on the floor, on Shabbos. Or a woman find, you walk uh, home from shul, and let's say you walk through a street and you see the filling on the floor. So you pick them up, put them on, and it's like you're, you're, wearing, a, you're wearing your clothes. And then you deliver them to the house. Sometimes a man would give his wife a ring that has a signet. To take it to put it into in a, in a chest, to put it in the safe box. And she puts it on her hand until she makes it to the chest. And the same thing, sometimes a woman would give her husband a ring that doesn't have a signet on it, and she would walk with it. The husband would walk with the woman's ring to the, uh, to the jewelry guy, to the silversmith uh, craftsman, 
give it to him, and he would fix it. But the husband would wear it. He puts it on his hand. And she may not go out with a kuliyar and not wearing a spice bundle. What is this kuliyar? So it says, Mishnah called it a brooch, reflecting the Gemara conclusion. Let's see. My kuliyar, the, the Gemara is, what is kuliyar? Amarav mach banto. It is a brooch used to uh, close the open ends of a woman's blouse. I guess some kind of a zipper. It says in 43, um, where he states that this ornament is round in shape. The round shape as a band worn around the head. It is deemed a burden because most women do not wear it. Okay, some kind of a bend around the head. Amarav Kavel Asrav says it's a. And what is a spice bundle? So he answers. Chumato de Filon, a packet containing pilon. What is pilon? It says in 44, the packet was a hollow pendant which was worn by women who suffered from unpleasant body odor. They would place an aromatic spice called pilon, dependent, and its aroma would mask the unpleasant odor. The pilon Ravasi also said. The Mishnah refers to a pendant containing containing pilon. Tanu Rabon lo yisitze bechoveles. She may not go out with a spice bundle. Veim yotza so him. She did go out. She has to bring a kovan chatos. Chayavet chatos. Di Rabbi Meir. These are the words of Rabbi Meir. Chachomim rim. Lo yisitze. She shouldn't go out with it. Veim yotza so. And if she did go out, pturo she is potu. She doesn't have to bring kovan chatos. Rabbi Lezer Emer bechoveles lechatchila. Rabbi Lezer says. Um, a woman may go out with a spice bundle even in the first place. But my conflict is, what do they argue? Rabbi Meir says it's a burden. Rabbi says no, it's an ornament. Dilma, Shofo, Umachio, and then maybe perhaps she will remove it to show it to her friends and then carry it. And then she would come to carry it. Who is accustomed to put a spice bundle? A woman whose odor is unpleasant. A woman that has an unpleasant odor, she would not remove it. She would not walk with it for Amos and Shusarabim in the public domain. Rabbelezer exempt her from Chatos liability if she goes out with a spice bundle or a flask of a balsam, balsam oil. The writer would seem to intimate that according to Rabbelezer, going out with these items is rabbinically prohibited, while the previous writer stated by Rabbelezer holds that the, that the, the uh, wearing, wearing of a spice bundle is completely permitted. The Gemara says like Kashi, Okia, Oki Kai de Rabme, Okai de Rabbon. When um, when he says it's prohibited, is the opinion of Rabbe Meir. When the opinion that says that it's permitted, completely permitted, follows the opinion of the rabbis. Kikoya de Rabbe Meir, the Omar Chav Chatos. When Rabbe Lezer ruling is being contrasted with the view of Rabbe Meir. Rabbi Lezer's ruling is contrasted with the view of Meir, who said that going out while wearing a spice bundle is biblically prohibited, and the wearer is liable to chatos amolei potu. Rabbi Lezer said to Rabbi Meir, he is, she is exempt. There is no liability to chatos. Ki koyed the rabbon dama potu aval osu. The rabbi said potu, although you are potu, but still also it's still prohibited to to wear it. Amar Iu Potu from Kobun Chatos, not to bring a sin offering. 
Amar Yom Mutar Chatechila, Rabbi Lazar said, it is permitted even in the first place. Umay Rabbi Meir, And in what place is Rabbi Lazar's ruling is contrasted with the view of Rabbi Meir, that Tanya lo yisei te isho mitpachas she b'mavtiach she biyodo. A woman may not go out on the Shabbos with a key in her hand. If she, le- if she did go out of the house with a key in her hand, she is liable to a sin offering. These are the words of Meir. Rabbi says she is exempt in the case of a spice bundle to mask the unpleasant odor. Or with a, a flask of balsam oil, she is pot. She doesn't have to bring the sin offering. She she did go out with it. Kriveles man dechal shmei. The Gemara says, who made mention of a of a spice, of a spice bundle. That Rabbi Lezer saw fit to issue his ruling exempting the wearer. A spice bundle is not discussed in the Bible at all. How did you get to it? So Chasur Mechasur, the Gemara says the Mishnah is missing words, Ve'achi Kitani, and this is um, what it should say. Ve'chen v'chovelez v'chen v'tzloch sh'er paltin lo paltin lo yiseitze, and also with a spice, a woman may not go out with a spice of bundle, and also with a flask of balsam oil, she may not go out. Ve'im yotzo so, ve'im yotzo chayev eschatos, if she did go out, she is liable to come to a sin offering. Dear Rabbi Meir, these are the words of, of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Lezer, Poitav, Chavales, Vizur, and Shepaito, Rabbi Lezer, exempt her in the case of spice, bundle, or flask of balsam oil. Med, Vurim, Amung, Shesh, Ben, Boisam. It says, when, in what case, were these words stated, when the spice of, when the spice bundle or flask have spice or oil in them, Aval, En, Ben, Boisam, but if there is no spice or oil in them, and a woman wears them when they are empty, Chayevus, then she is liable to Ochatus. Amravado Baravo, they say, Meres, what do we learn from this? Amritzir, and Pochot Mikeshu Bechli, one who takes out less than the minimum quantity of food in a utensil in the Shabbos, Chayo, he is liable. Deo, ain't Boboisim, and Pochot Mikeshu Bechli, Domi, Ktoni Chayevus. Says, in order to be biblically liable, for taking out an item on the Shabbos, one must take out significant or useful quantity of that item. The minimum amounts for many common items are discussed in the 7th and 8th chapter of this tractate. In chapter Shabbos, the Berg Shvi, 7th and 8th. The minimum amount for most uh, foodstuffs is a piece the size of a dried fig. So what happened if somebody walked out with a piece less than a dried fig? So they are in Bobo Yisabakhashubhidami for taking out a spice bundle or flask that has no spice or oil. It is comparable to taking out less than the minimum quantity of food in a utensil, Vikitani Khayevis. And the Baisa teaches that in the case, in that case, the wearer is liable. In the case of one who takes out less than that less than the minimum quantity of food. In a utensil, you should be liable. With regard to the general case of less than the minimum quantity of food in a utensil, I can say to you that one is exempt. But here is different. What's the difference here? The lace, the mamosho, klal. Because there is no substance in it at all. So the, the aroma, when it comes to smell, the aroma is not considered as less than the minimum quantity. Rather, it is disregarded entirely, and the pendant is deemed completely empty. Accordingly, one who wears it on the Shabbos is liable. In the case of food, however, it is possible that Abelezer would concur with the view of the Mishnah and exempt one who takes out such a utensil. Or there, 
the utensil can be deemed inconsequential with respect to the small quantity of food that is in it. It's like uh, taking um, a bottle of water on Shabbos. So you're taking the bottle or you're taking the water that is in the bottle. So the bottle is inconsequential to the water that is in it because you're taking it for the water. And now, yeah, the Gemara discusses about uh, the balsam oil, whether you take it out or not. It says, as a posuk in a posuk in Amos, the prophet Amos, chapter 6, verse 6, he writes, which means they anoint themselves with the finest of oils. This is what Amos is referring to, referring to Plaiton, which is balsam oil. Masiv Rav Yisef, Rav Yisef objected, Afa Palton Goza Rabbi Uda Ben Bava. Even against the use of balsam, did Rabbi Uda Ben Bava decree not to do it? Veloi duloi. But the sages did not agree with him. Veomot Mishum Taino Gamai Loi duloi. But if you say that the But if you say that the aforementioned pasuk refers to balsam, and hence it is evident that balsam is used for purposes of pleasure, am I loy loy? Why did the sages did not agree with Rabbi Yudha ben Bava, who banned the use of balsam? Amar le'abai will tell me, according to your reasoning, adichtiv, ashoyisim v'mizrekeyayin, those who drink out of bowls of wine, Rabbi Ami Rabasi Chadoma Kini Shkonin, the Chadoma Shemazokin Kisi Sen Zelze. One said, What does it mean? Rabbi Ami Rabasi gave different interpretation of this pasuk. Ashesim and Mizraki Yain, who drink out of bowls of wine. One said, It refers to Kinshokin. What is Kinshok? Kinshkonin? Kinshkonin. A tall glass vessel with two spouts. Two people can drink out of it simultaneously. It's like having a cup with two straws and two people are drinking together. Or having a vessel that has two spouts. So that's the meaning of Shoitzin Bemizuki Yain. That's of Ami Veravasi. So one said it's this uh, vessel with two spouts. One said that it means that they threw, they threw their cups to each other. Therefore, here too, regarding each of these activities, you should say that it is forbidden because it is included in the Pasuk. Rav Baravuna visited the house of Reish Galusa, the exiliarch Vishoso Bekini. Shikonin, and he and he the exiliarch himself drank from this type of a vessel with two spouts. Omar did not say anything to him at all by way of rebuke. We see that not everything listed in the verse is prohibited. Everything that involves pleasure. And also involves joy. Gozo be Rabbonon, the rabbis decreed against uh, its use. Aval mide de isbe tanog veles be simcha loy gozo rabbonon. But if it has pleasure but no joy, the rabbis did not decree against its use. The rabbis bend only those activities that inspire both of these emotions, both of these emotions, a pleasure and joy. Hence, the activities listed in the pasuk in Amos, which involves pleasure but not necessarily joy, balsam oil, are not all prohibited. doesn't say what why did they bend 
pleasure if if these two emotions coming together pleasure and joy why did they bend it it doesn't say why not but um it says Azimolis Pinu, maybe you can answer that uh, in the time of Mashiach we're allowed to have a complete true laughter and joy. So it, maybe it has to do with the destruction of the temple and not to have both emotions together. But have them separately, they did not decree against it. Continue the Gemara, it says This is a also a Pasuk in Amos who lie upon beds of ivory Mitis Shane is ivory stretched out on their couches. What does it mean? Amar Abiyasi Babi Khanina Melam and Shao Mashtina Maim if name it is same or woman. The Pasuk teaches that they would urinate before their beds while naked. That is, if they needed to urinate while they were still in their beds, they would not bother to get dressed and go outside. Instead, they would urinate on the floor next to their beds. Okay? This interpretation is rejected and a different uh, one proposed. scoffed at it, saying, If so, there is no difficulty with that which is written in the following postup. Therefore, now they shall go into exile at the head of the exiles. Because they urinate before their beds while naked, they will go into exile at the head of the exiles. Clearly, this punishment is too severe for such an act. These are people who eat and drink with each other and attach their beds one to the other and exchange their wives with each other and they defile their couches with semen that is not theirs. So this explains why Amos said that, that this, this type of people will end up They shall go into exile at the head of the exiles. Amar Abba Vamula Vasis Atano Shloisha Dvori Mevi in a Sodom Lidanius. Three things cause a person to be poor. The Eluhen Amashin Maim Bifne Mitosa Orem, urinating before one's bed naked. The Gemara in Psachim. 1, 1, uh, 111 b states that an angel, the angel of poverty is called novel, which connotes repulsiveness. This means that the poverty is occasioned by, by repulsive behavior, such as urinating before one's bed. So the Gemara uh, specifies naked only because it, that is the typical circumstance. When a person is lying in bed naked, he would urinate next to his bed rather than go to to the trouble of getting dressed and going outside. However, the same applies to one who urinates before his bed while closed. According to this reasoning, a bed is also mentioned only because it is the most uh, common example. Indeed, urinating in any place where it is repulsive, such as next to one's table, would also cause poverty. That's the interpretation of Marsha. So that number one is is this um, be, behavior of uh, of urinating next to your bed, next to your table, that causes um, bring a person to poverty. At forbid ve'eluhen, where the second one is umezalzer v'natina sedaim, treating the mitzvah of washing the hands lightly. It is a rabbinic obligation to wash one's head to wash one's hands in a certain manner before eating a meal. And if someone is mezalzel, is not doing it properly or is not doing it at all, it could, God forbid, bring poverty. And being cursed by one's wife in one's own presence. 
So she curses him in front of people. What do you mean? It's cursed by one's wife in one's own presence. That doesn't mean anybody else got to be there. So what? whose presence? What does it mean? It's, it means it's like, General, if she, she curses it's, you? It's, it's, it, she's just being, you could be by yourself and she's giving it to you. Yeah, so don't bother her so she doesn't curse you and you don't come to poverty. So the Gemara says, Amashi mind if name one who urinates before his bed naked. Amarava the Mahada Api Lefui. We do not say that this leads to poverty except where he turns his face toward his bed while urinating. Avale Varoi lays on but if he faces outward we have no objection to it. And even regarding one who turns his face toward his bed while urinating, and we do not say that this leads to poverty, except when he, where he urinates onto the ground. But if he urinates into a vessel, we have no objection to it. Regarding one who treats um, the mitzvah of washing the hands lightly, we do not say that this leads to poverty. Except where he does not wash his hands at all. But where he, he does wash his hands, although he does not wash them well, we have no objection to it. So he, if he uses a small amount of water, reveals the minimum required to satisfy the obligation, which is not enough for a thorough washing. But if he does it, he's not going to. Mizaza means that he doesn't do it. In this case, or he uses less than a vis. Velav milteid Oma Rabchizda. Rabchizda said, Ano mashay melechof nemayo. I wash my hand, or I washed my hands with handfuls of water. I use a lot of water when I wash my hands from tilas yadayim. Ve'yahavu li melechof nitivuso. And I was given full handfuls of prosperity. It says in 33, in the merit of washing his hands with a generous amount of water, Rav Chizda was granted prosperity since he enhanced his performance of the uh, preparations required before eating food. He was blessed with an abundance of food. Rav Chizda implies that the more water one uses the more one will be blessed. He thus contradicts Rava's statement, but where he where, um, but where he does wash his hands, although he does not wash them well, we have no objection to it. That was the opinion of Rav um, or Rava's statement. But Chizda says differently: the more you wash, the better it is, which indicates that the one has nothing to lose by using the minimum amount of water. That was the opinion of, of Rava. However, to avoid poverty of Chizda could well agree that using the minimum suffices. Hence, you would, there's two things, to avoid poverty and to be, to be prosperous. But to be prosperous, you need to, according to Chizda, you need to use a lot of water when washing your hands before eating bread. Now the next thing is about the wife. Regarding one whose um, wife curses him in his presence. Amarava Aliski Tachshitea. The case is that she, that she curses him concerning matters of her adornments for not providing her with adornments. High maintenance. No, she's complaining that he, she doesn't, he get she doesn't get adornments and jewelry. Yeah. No. And this teaching, namely, that such a curse causes poverty, applies only where he had enough money to buy adornments for her. We of it, but he doesn't. I'm not talking about a, a, a guy doesn't have. Right a guy that has and doesn't want to buy. Right. And she curses him for that. Then he is. Uh, then he's, he might uh, bring upon himself, uh, God forbid, poverty. Since he did not take care of his wife's needs, his needs will not be provided for, 
and he will he will be reduced um, to poverty. That's the interpretation of Meiri and Chidush Aran. So you don't take care of her needs. If you don't take care of her needs, your needs are going to be a, a de 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 deprived as well. My wife doesn't like what I buy, so she buys her own stuff. It's not because I'm cheap. I'm not cheap. I could buy whatever. She doesn't like my taste and stuff. What can I do? Well, find the, find out find out her taste and then buy. I try. She likes to do her own. As long as she doesn't curse you, it's good. She doesn't good. curse me. She's all right. She's happy. Do Hashav Brei the Rabbi Loi Mai Dichti Vayemer Avaye Pasuk it says Vayemer Avaye Yan Ki Govu Bnei Tzir. Spoke about high maintenance. So the Gemara now mentions uh, here we go, here Isaiah we go. three sixteen. God warns that because these women are haughty, they will be punished with the afflictions enumerated in the following psukim. So it says, Hashem said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, it means that they would walk with erect posture. Yeah. going. Walking with outstretched necks, Shom Alchus Okiv Betzad Gudol. They did the uh, the walk. What do they call it? That they would walk oh, wow. with short steps, putting the heel of one foot next to the big toe on the eye on on the other. Maybe like, the model yeah, they walk. Like the models that we talked about yesterday. Mishakus Inaim, gazing eyes. What gazing eyes? Da'avu Melon Kuchla Leinayu Meramzon. This means that they would fill their eyes. With makeup and beacon to the young men. Beckon. They would uh, hey. wink. <laughs> hey. You know, like the bar at the bar. I don't know. I never, uh, I don't know I never got I, winked I, at. I, I don't put it in the bar. with Tofif floating as they walked. This means that a tall woman would walk next to a short woman. What's the idea? of a, a sh short walking next to, so it says literally they would walk a tall woman next to a short woman the taller woman would appear to float above the shorter one enhancing her attractiveness so she only used the short one so to, the short to, one ends up look like a loser <laughs> yeah to create a, to, to, to have more attraction to her to enhance her attractiveness so the post um, speaks of this disparagingly because it refers to married women. For a single woman who is seeking a husband, such behavior is not always inappropriate. Primarily is, is the married ones. Another issue, it says of Aglen, Ta'akasno. And with their feet, they would spew venom. Spew. Yeah, spew venom. Amar of Yitzchak, Devei Rabbi Ami, this teaches that they would put mirth and balsam in their shoes. Myrrh. Yeah, myrrh. And balsam in their shoes. They put heavy perfume. I never studied. And they would walk in the marketplaces of Yerushalayim. And when they reached unmarried Jewish youth, Boyatas Bekaka, they would stamp on the ground, Umatiz Salem, and they spray the perfume all over them, Umachnisus Boyn Yetzer Arak Eres Bechos, driving the evil inclination into them like the venom of an angry snake. Whoa. So, Mai Po Onuseim, the Gemara says, what their punishment, Kedo Ishrabo Barula, and it should be that instead of fragrance, there will be a decay. The very place where, the, where they perfumed themselves become full of decay. And instead of the belt, bruising. The very place where they girded themselves, where they built, became full of bruises. And instead of carved 
items of jewelry, boldness. The very place where they adorned themselves became full of bold patches. And instead of the sash, a belt of sackcloth. The openings that lead to gladness will be for a girding of sackcloth. Kisacha Sefi for the all these all these things will befall you instead of beauty. Amar Ravo Hainu Dhamra Inche This uh post of reflect reflect the maxim that people say Khilufe Shufro Kivo in exchange of beauty soars or some say for beauty you have to suffer. So this is a similar idea. No, this is like in exchange they, of beauty source they, because they were, she was, so, they were so into themselves and they all and then no it says their punishment will be that that, no, that the, the, these what, places that they they yeah, they, I they, know. they think they're faced or the body right. blah, 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 and then they end up uh, with the sword so Vashipa Havaye the Gemara expands upon another passage that describes the punishment of these women Vashipa Havaye called Kibnes Tzir this is in Isaiah 3.17. The Lord will afflict the heads of the daughters of Zion with lesions. Amar Abiyasi v'Abichanina Abiyasi son of Abichanina said, Melamed sheporcho b'en tzara'as This teaches that tzara'as broke out in them. Ksi v'ocho v'shipach It's written here, He shall afflict with lesions. Ksi v'ocho is written there in reference to tzara'as and the laws of the Seis and of the Sapachas, which is a type of uh, lesions, of Tzaras, mm-hmm. leprosy, Hashem, Pson, Yore, and Hashem will cause the openings to pour. Rav mm-hmm. two opinions. Chadomar, they were pulled out like a pitcher. Chadomar, that the openings became like a forest. The men of Yerushalayim were men of pretentiousness. Pretentiousness. Show off. Yes. Yeah. They would speak in an arrogant they would speak in an arrogant gilded tongue. They would mask their low behavior by alluding to it with a high class manner of speech. The Fagel would do this. <laughs> so, Sorry guys, that's the way it is. Adam Emar Tayom. Why did you dine today? That would be a, for know, example conversation. And that's who cares about it. A man would ask his fellow, What did you why did you dine today? Bepat Amilo or Pas Amilo? Did you dine on bread that was well needed or the bread was not well needed? Beyond Gudali on goodly wine or behind Khardoli or Khardoli wine. Goodly wine is white, Khardoli is black. That is to say was the women women fair or dark? So in, in one it says I, so really, they're talking about private, intimate things. Yeah, yeah, they're talking trash. But they were asking it in a nice way. Yeah, they're, that's why. Uh, that's how that is with them. Also so the, some of the others, but. Bemei savrocho, bemei savkotzer. Did you recline on the white couch or a narrow couch? Yeah. <laughs> Again, people would recline. While well, the question was, the woman fat or thin? Yeah, well, that's obvious. That's what they wanted to know. And, but they're asking it again in a nice way. And all these questions pertain to illicit sexual relations. Yeah. The section concludes with another narrative about the fragrances of Yerushalayim. The logs used in Yerushalaym as fuel were of the cinnamon tree. 
and when they would burn uh, some of, of those logs, the, fra- the fragrance would waft through all of Eretz But when Yerushalayim was destroyed, they were hidden, and only a piece the size of a barley grain remained, which is found in the storehouses of Queen Tzim Tzimai. It says in, uh, in note 4, that was her name. Marsha suggests that Tzim Tzimai is the verb meaning adorn. The Gemara means that the last piece of cinnamon wood was stored in the treasure house of a certain king and was used only as a perfume for the queen. Bruchim Tiu.